Hello my shining stars. I am Mahida, the Queen of Sheba. Allow me to speak to you this evening about, Sabaism, Astrolatry, or Star Worship. We all hear very little, if anything, about what the spiritual science of the ancients and sages of antiquity was, before, and prior to, the advent of the history of Adam and Eve, 6,000 years ago. Their spiritual science was, Sabaism, down through evolution. Sabaism means, true star worshipper, or admiration of the true stars, for being the visible creators of the universe, and of course, the stars of the cosmos, are the sons of the universes of nature. Sabaism was practiced by the Sabines, or Sabians, who were an ancient people who lived in the southern Arabian Peninsula, and the Horn of Africa, near present-day Sudan, Ethiopia, Eritrea, and Somalia. Because of our star worship, the Sabines were known as, the Star People. The Sabines maintained that the true stars of the universes of eternal nature, are the growers, and controlling gods of the cosmos, the universes of absolute nature. Sabaism is the worship of stars and the spirits in stars. The Sabines wrote and left behind many inscriptions documenting their star worship, in two scripts, called the Musnad, and Zabur. The root word Saba, of Sabaism, was passed down into the Hebrew language as the word, Tar Saba or Sabah, which appears in the Judeo-Christian Bible in the book of Joshua, chapter 5, verse 14, where it means, hosts of heaven, or heavenly host, referring to the army of angels. Simply put, the angels are the stars, the stars are the heavenly host, the mansions of the moon, the decan spoken of by the ancient Egyptians. Another word for Sabaism is Astrolatry. Astrolatry is the worship of stars and other heavenly bodies as deities, or the association of deities with heavenly bodies. The most common instances of Astrolatry are sun gods, and moon gods, in polytheistic systems worldwide. In Zoroastrianism, they worship the Zoroaster, the zero star, which is the sun, because all stars are suns. In Babylonian and Greco-Roman religion, heavenly bodies are associated with the gods. The five visible planets, plus the sun and the moon, which gives the number seven, are Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, the sun, and the moon. These are the seven heavens, the seven objects in the heavens, and why you have seven archangels and seven days of the week. This is why the number seven in Arabic and Swahili is pronounced, Saba and why the number 7 in Hebrew is pronounced, Sheba. The sacredness of the number 7 in relationship to the development of modern religion comes from the Sabaism of the Sabines. All modern religions are founded upon astrotheology, the observation of the stars. The ancient Egyptians also practiced astrolatry and had several stellar deities including the goddess Nut, along with Sahu, Soptu, and Sopdet, the deification of the Orion and Sirius stars. In ancient Egypt, the stellar constellations were used to divide the night sky into decans, which were called the 36 gods of heaven, and each ruled for 10 days each year. In ancient Egypt, the word, Saber, was represented by a five-pointed star hieroglyph, a pentagram. Of course you can hear the phonetic similarity between the word, Saber, and the word, Saber. The Saber was a symbol of the constellations, or star gods. When enclosed in a circle, the saber represented the duat, or other world, where the sun disappeared each night, and to which the souls of the dead ascended after death. In the Medunita language of the ancient people of Kemet, the word, saber, means learning or discipline or disciple, and is associated with doorways and gateways. The infinite and unchanging nature of the stars overhead influenced the development of the Egyptian calendar and their beliefs regarding life after death. It was believed that the stars did not just inhabit this world, but the stars also existed in the duet, the land of the afterlife, as well. The Egyptians believed that your soul could ascend to the sky to live as a star in heaven. The Sabines lived in the kingdom of Saba, which has been identified with the biblical land of Sheba, and their queen was I, the queen of Sheba. The queen of Sheba, was also called, Malek Saba, which was mispronounced to create the name, Markida. Markida is also a corruption of the word, Kandaki, the title given to the Nubian Ethiopian queens from Mero, the Candaces of Mero. In Greek legend, the Queen of Sheba is called Sabi, one of the Sibyl oracles who came from the southern ends of the earth. As a Saber, well-learned disciplined disciple, the Queen of Sheba was equally intelligent as she was beautiful. 
the Queen of Sheba tested Solomon's wisdom, and seduced him, with two hard questions. The first question was, what are the seven that issue, and nine that enter, the two that offer drink, and the one that drinks? The correct answer is, the seven that issue, are the seven days of menstrual impurity. The nine that enter, are the nine months of pregnancy. The two that offer drink, are the breasts, and the child is the one who drinks. The second question was, how can a woman say to her son, your father is my father, your grandfather, my husband, you are my son, and I am your sister? The correct answer is, the two daughters of Lot, who became pregnant by their father and bore sons. From this interaction, Solomon, and the Queen of Sheba, began our relationship. Nebuchadnezzar was the fruit of the union between Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. Also, Manlik I, the King of Kings, Negus Negast, was a child of the union between Solomon and Marqueda, the Queen of Sheba, and this is the ancestral line of descendancy of His Imperial Majesty, King Haile Selassie I, Shur, Rastafari. Arabs who did not approve of the union between Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, gave me the name, Bilkis, which means concubine, as a way to delegitimize my union with Solomon. They also described Bilkis as the Queen of the Demons, a demonic witch, and a seductive dancer. This is why the 2017 TV show called American Gods, depicts Bilkis as an erotic demon. The Arabs also identified her with Lilith, and called her a, Ifrit, Jinn, half human and half demon. It is believed by some that this Arabic word, Ifrit, meaning Jinn, is the origin of the word Africa. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. I'm black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedah, as the curtains of Solomon.